So we will move to the next module where I would like to show you a link between PCA and autoencoders. So this is what I am trying to show you that under certain conditions PCA is or rather an autoencoder is equivalent to a PCA and the conditions are if you use a linear encoder, if you use a linear decoder, if you use a squared error loss function and if you normalize the inputs to this. So for the time being just ignore the last bullet, let us look at the other three bullets. Using squared error loss function, so remember I gave you different choices right, you could have used the cross entropy or the squared error loss, but I am going to prove this equivalence only under the condition when we have the squared error loss. What do I mean the u encoder is a linear encoder? G is a linear function, we are not using a sigmoid function or any logistic or anything like that. And linear decoder, again the same thing, we are not using sigmoid or softmax or anything at the output, it is a linear function. Under these conditions, I will show you that or I will try to show you that PCA is equal, uh, auto encoder is equal to PCA. What does this mean actually, okay? Now what do I mean by it is equivalent? What do I have to show you actually? How many of you understand what I am trying to prove? How many of you can mathematically define it? Okay, so we will try to make this clear over the next 15 minutes or so. First let us look at the last condition right which I ignored. Okay, I, I always anticipate all this right, so I have full faith in you guys. Okay, what does this mean? Now what am I doing? Centering the data and I am also doing 1 by square root of m. Why? Mean at the standard deviation to hogai. Okay, fine. So the operation in the bracket ensures that your data now has become zero centered, right? It's uh, zero mean. And now let x dash be this matrix, this one, right? Such that all its elements are zero mean. Uh, is there still a flicker here? So let I'm calling x dash as this matrix. Okay. So this matrix where I also have one by square root of m, I can write it as. Everyone gets this, this is simple. Now do you see where this is headed? What would x transpose x be? Covariance matrix. So I needed that 1 by m, right, at the out. So now this is the covariance matrix. So if I do this normalization to the original data and then if I take, let x dash be that quantity and then if I take x transpose x, then I will get the covariance matrix. Everyone gets this, that I did this to get the covariance matrix, okay. So that, I mean I did this, so that when I take x transpose x, I get the covariance matrix. After this normalization only it will be the covariance matrix, okay. Uh, so first we will show that if you use a linear encoder, decoder and a squared error loss function, then the optimal solution to the following objective function, what is this objective function? Squared error loss is obtained when we use a linear encoder. Do you understand the implication of this, what is being stated here, okay. So I have fixed the decoder, I have said that the decoder is going to be a linear decoder. I have fixed the encoder, uh, I have fixed the loss function which is going to be a squared error loss function. This is given to me. Now under these conditions, I am trying to minimize this loss function, okay. Then I am telling you that the only solution to this is that the function dash should be a linear function. Which function? The function g should be a linear function. You cannot choose sigmoid or logistic or anything else, right. The optimal solution will occur when g is a linear function. Everyone gets what is being stated here, okay, okay. So this summation that I have written, right, or in fact this entire objective that I have written is actually equivalent to this objective. Is this fine with everyone? Even though I have not defined what capital H is, just fine with everyone. So we had this x, which was x1 to xm. I had picked one of these x i's, what is the dimension of this? 1 cross n and then I had multiplied it by a weight matrix w, not w star, remember that. What was the dimension of w? n cross k and what did I get as the output? I got an h which was 1 cross k. What did I do to this? Multiplied it by W star which was K cross N and what did I get as the output? X hat which was 1 cross N. 
right. So, what I am telling you is that I could do this together for all these xi's, I could do this operation at one go and I can call this as the x matrix and what will I get here? H 1 to H 2 to H m and I can call it as the capital H matrix and I multiply it by W star and what do I get? X cap, ok. Is that fine now? Ok. But without defining these things also it was fine, so it does not matter, ok. So, now how many of you get that this quantity is the same as this quantity? Oh, you get it, ok, <laughs> fine. Uh, I thought you are answering why. Uh, Oh, it is just obvious, how do I explain this? What is the Frobenius norm of a matrix? Sum of the squares of the elements, ok. Now, what is the matrix x? x 1 1 up to x 1 n and x m 1 up to x m n and all elements in between, right. What is the matrix h w star? We just did that. The same thing except that it is x hat. Okay. Now, I take the difference between these two, what do I get? Every element of that matrix is equal to this quantity that I have underlined, right. So, I get a new matrix such that every element of that matrix is equal to this quantity. Is that fine? Now, I am taking the square of every element of that matrix and adding them up. What is that equal to? The Frobenius norm. How many if you get that now? Almost everyone, okay. So, this is equivalent to the Frobenius norm, ok. Now, where have you seen the Frobenius norm before? What did we show in the SVD theorem? Let us try to connect things, right. If you do not learn how to connect things, it is going to be very difficult. What is this x hat? It is a dash of x reconstruction, it is a dash of x approximation. What is the solution to this optimization problem? What is the solution to this optimization problem? I actually started off with the answer that we saw this in the SVD theorem and then I asked you a question. What 30 hours, 32 hours, what even 32 hours have passed since we did this. Come on, what is the solution to this? No, no, that is fine, but what is the solution? <laughs> x hat is equal to what? The best approximation to x is given by what? Is it fine? Yeah, yeah, so some k, yeah but it is going to come from the SVD theorem, right. Is that fine? It depends on what rank approximation you want, but it the best approximation to this is going to be given by the SVD of x. Is it ok? Everyone gets that? Yes, forgot about it, but now do you remember it? All those extra lectures 8 o'clock in the morning, ok. So, that means h w star should be equivalent to this that we know from the S SVD theorem that the optimal solution is going to be given by SVD. So, if I just compare terms, ok, then I could write that one solution is this that H, H is equal to u into sigma and W star is equal to V transpose. I could have chosen the other solution also where H is equal to V or sorry u and W star is equal to sigma V, ok. But I will work with this particular solution. You see this, I am just matching variables, right. It is said that A B is equal to C D E. So, I am saying that A is equal to C D and B is equal to E. Is that fine? Ok. Now, we will work with this. So, and we will try to show something. So, let us see what we are trying to show. Now, first thing that we will show is that H is actually a linear encoding. So, what does this mean? You first always understand what has been tried to prove. Right? I am saying that I am going to show that H is a linear encoding of X. Then what is it that I am trying to show? I am trying to show that H is equal to a linear encoding of X and H is of the form W X and not something of the form W sigmoid of W X or something like that or any other non-linearity for that. Is the statement clear? That is what I am trying to show. When I say H is a linear encoding, I, I mean that H is obtained by a linear transformation of X, ok. Now, H as we defined on the previous slide is equal to this, ok. Now, if I already had an X here, then I was done but I do not have an x there yet. So, I want to get to a form where I can show that h is equal to w into x, ok. So, I will just do some simple trickery and arrive try to arrive at that form. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is pre-multiply and uh, pre-multiply by this quantity, and this is fair because this is just equal to i. What next? I'll write these three x's as u sigma v transpose. Okay, and I'll leave one x as it is. Is that okay? Now, just can you just try to see what the next step would be? This v transpose v will disappear because it's equal to i. Now, what happened here? I actually just expanded this inverse. So, I'll think of this as a, b, c. So, a, b, c inverse is equal to c inverse, b inverse, a inverse. So, I've just applied that. It's just that my inverses are very straightforward matrices here. They are just the transform of the original matrices. Everyone gets this step? Right? You can stare at it for a, for a few more seconds if you want. How many of you don't get this? How many of you get this? Okay. Uh, now, what's next? This u transpose u disappears. This also disappears? No. It's this u is only the first k columns of u. Right? This is not the entire u, this is just the first k columns of u. Fine. Now, what next? A into b inverse is b inverse a inverse. What will happen now? That quantity will disappear. So, what do you have left now? Okay, so there is something. Okay, so now let us look at this. This is, let us say, this is n cross n and this is n cross k. What is the output going to be? n cross k. And what is the output going to look like? Is the first k columns of the identity matrix. Everyone gets that? If you do not, you can just work it out with a small matrix after going home and you will get it, right? If so, if I had done the full multiplication, I would have got the identity matrix, but I am just taking the first k columns. So, I will get the first k columns of the identity matrix. Do not fret too much if you are not getting this. You can just work it out on paper and you will get it, okay? So, I get the first k columns of the identity matrix and this inverse disappears. This sigma transpose into sigma transpose inverse. Uh, now, what next? What is this product going to be? The first k elements of sigma inverse, okay? And that is going to get multiplied by sigma k cross k. So, that will give me the first k elements of identity matrix. There are some very simple matrix operations where you are uh, just taking some columns, right? So, if you do not understand this right now, do not worry, you can work it out. Everyone is confident they can do this? Please raise your hands if you are confident, okay? And now, what do I finally get? This multiplication will give me the first k columns of B. Okay. So, have we come to the desired form? What have I shown now? H is a dash of x, a linear transformation of x. That means my optimal encoder was a linear encoder. And what was the optimal weight matrix W? The first k columns of B. Yeah, I Someone pointed it last time also, I could not, I ignored it. I just pretend I understood, but I get it. I, I know that there is a simpler solution. I, I do not know why I do it this way, but there is a simpler solution. I just like making life miserable for you guys, but, but the point is you can figure it out that it is a, uh, it is a linear transformation of x, okay. Now, we have that the encoder is equal to the first k columns of v, okay. What is V? Eigenvectors of x transpose x, okay. What is the other thing that you know about the eigenvectors of x transpose x? They are the solution for the, if you are given a matrix x, the, then the PCA is the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. What is the covariance matrix? x transpose x. What are its eigenvectors? Capital V, right. So, what have we arrived at? Are we done with the proof? Yes? How many of you think we are done with the proof? How many of you think we are done now? So, it is done, right? So, we have proved what we wanted to prove, right? So, what did we want to prove? That you, you are doing uh, auto encoders, you are trying to train an auto encoder and your loss function is the squared error loss function. We saw a neat way of writing that squared error loss function as a matrix operation where x minus capital H into W and then we saw that the squared error loss function is nothing but the Frobenius norm of this. And we knew that the minima of this objective function 
the Frobenius norm of x minus h w would occur when h w is equal to the S V D of x right. We started from there and showed that h is actually a linear transformation of x and what was that linear transformation which matrix was used for the linear transformation V capital V. What is capital V? It is the eigenvectors of x transpose x. So, what has happened in effect is that if I was trying to train my auto encoder with this objective function the weights in my initial layer w would actually converge to v which are the eigenvectors of x transpose x. That means the transformation that I have learned this transformation which I have learned is the same as the transformation that I would have learned using PCA because PCA would also have given me v into x where v was the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix and we just arrived at the same solution. Everyone gets it now? We are done with the proof ok. So, what we have proved is under these specific conditions that the encoder of a linear auto encoder is linear auto encoder is equal to PCA if we use a linear decoder, if we use a, lean, a squared error loss function and if we normalize the inputs to this and you understand why each of these steps was important, why was the last step important? Only then we would have got the covariance matrix. Why was a step before that important? Because only if it was a squared error loss, we would have got that Frobenius norm objective function, right? And why was the uh, linear decoder imp important? Again, the same thing because x minus h w, we wanted it to be linear, right? Is it fine? So, you see why all these assumptions were important, and under these conditions, we have proved that autoencoder is equivalent to PCA. How many of you are completely lost at this point? How many of you have followed 80 percent of what we have done? 